<laughs> All right, Mario. So on the train. Yeah, that may on, be true. No. <laughs> on, on the train, on the train deal. So. Uh, Look at the pictures. That's an American Centerflow hopper car, and if that's loaded, that's got a real bad uh, brake to weight ratio. It's not like your car, right? So once that thing even gets on an incline, if the brakes aren't permanent, locked off tight. That can start to rolling. This just happened last year or the year before up in Canada. You remember they had all the oil cars ran into that town? So you think that this could have happened without anybody uh, messing with it? Well, it's, it's been known to happen, but it's kind of odd circumstances where it happens where there's brake slippage, the brakes are yeah. worn, and the slightest little thing can get them going. But overall, it seems to me that it, you kind of have to actively work to get a, – a, if you have a railroad car sitting or standing still, static on the tracks, and there's no locomotive attached to it. Typically, there's no air pressure in the lines, and that's the fail state where the brakes go on. You have to, you have to, you have to like do stuff. You have to, you have, to have knowledge in order to how to disengage you, those you, brakes from that. Point. Mario, do you think, based on your knowledge of these uh, of these train cars, do you think a kid could have messed with this and and gotten the brakes to uh, to release? Well, it's possible. But I, I would put it as an older kid, maybe somebody that had like looked on. I don't know if they have, like, you know, YouTube videos because it's kind of odd that, that they could possibly sort of stumble their way through it because you have to you have to move a lever, then you have to turn the, the brake wheel to disengage the brake. Let me ask you this, Mario. When you were 15 years old, could you have done this? Uh, no, we used to go down to the railroad yard on Sundays, but we would just quietly explore and look around. We yeah, wouldn't yeah. talk with anything. That's maybe it's a different time. Although I thought there was some sort of a vandalism-related issue over in, well, again, there was the one last year. Uh, which was kind of odd yeah. because that also indicated like a some, some sort of like an insider knowledge. I can't remember what the specifics were, but my takeaway from it was that somebody knew what they were doing, or at least had you know they knew how to cause damage to that locomotive that would be the most expensive in the switch gear of it, which is you know that's like the heart of the the system. So that's what's most expensive. Yeah. So yeah. it seems to me that the kids could have fumbled through this. Probably not young kids. And if it was coupled to another, if it was coupled to another locomotive or other car set. It, that's even trickier to because you have to disconnect the MU lines. You have to lift a couple of lift bar. Right. It, it takes a, you kind of you got to kind of know what you're doing in order to do that. I'm not sure that if I just said here, kid, you know, figure out a way to disconnect this train from this other train. Now the bad thing here is is that that 040 locomotive. That's a historic locomotive. The men who built that are gone, Bill. Yeah. The, yeah. The, if that's not insured, that might just be a write off as it is because that could cost as much money to you know they would have to dig out the erector's drawings of that and somehow find somebody that could refabricate that. And the FRA has a thing where they're allowed to, you're allowed to s display a locomotive like that static, but if it was asbestos and whatnot, jacketing in it, but they're, you're, they're forbidden from, right, right. they're forbidden from uh, uh, tampering with it outside of a specific loc. So it's very expensive to fix that. That's the real loss. The building, that's a new construction. That right, right, right. right. That and, and I'm assuming there's, the there's, there's, cars, Simple, but the right. locomotive is really the problem. Right. There. So, yeah. Mario, you have described how this detachment would take place um, and how difficult it would be for someone who didn't know what they were doing. So, does that mean you have a conspiracy theory, or should I not call it that? Do you have a theory, I should say? No, no, uh, I don't have much of a theory. I do find it odd. I, I made the thing when I called Bill first thing on his way in this morning. I kind of said, isn't that odd that they just had something over there at that railroad railroad yard last year that was damaging? I thought it was one of the Adirondack Scenic Railroad locomotives. So that was what I asked Bill. I said, hey, does he think this has anything odd that it could somehow connect to that? And Bill said he didn't really wasn't sure about that. I don't, I don't know how you could because it, it, it doesn't have anything to do with the Adirondack Rail. I mean, this is more of a commercial, uh, right. uh, industrial train. Well, and it's, the Susquehanna's, they're insured for that, so that, yeah, that'll be yeah. covered. Like, right. yeah, So it would be totally a different entity, so I don't know that anybody would be aiming to cause problems and, and, for the railroad like that. And I can only imagine if a kid did uh, get over there and play around on the thing and then disengage the brakes and all of a sudden the, the car starts moving, you got to be thinking if you're the kid, you're like, oh, my God, what did I just do? Yeah. And you just go running. <laughs> well, and that's well, the report. We did right? something similar when yeah. we were kids. We were playing around a mobile home that had the blocks on it, and we actually excavated the dirt so we could play with our Tonkas under mm. the mobile. And the mobile home went straight down the hill. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. We came home from school, and we were like, "Wow, how did this green mobile home come all the way from the top <laughs> of the hill down?" And then, you know, when we talked to the old man that owned it and our parents, you yeah. know, they, we could, we said, "Well, we came clean. We weren't like freaked out." They said, "That's where you guys played. Did you guys yeah. do anything?" And we were like, "Yeah, we just messed with our." So the blocks fell over while we were at school one day. The guy came home and was like, "I thought my driveway was longer than this. Uh, <laughs> hmm, this is weird." All right, Mario. Thanks, man. I appreciate the uh, the insight on that. Thanks. All right, guys.